Welcome back to the Vulnerable API Exploitation Series. I have a really interesting one for you this time. This one is really cool. We're getting really hands-on with this. We are going to be exploiting an injection vulnerability in our API. And this is one of the uh, vulnerabilities that made the top 10 list of the top 10 uh, OWASP API vulnerabilities here. And in particular, we're going to be exploiting SQL injection. So it's really good to understand, you know, how this manifests and how to mitigate it uh, because it is one of the most devastating ones and it is still prevalent today, although not as prevalent as it used to be. You can still sometimes very well find this in the wild. And you'll see just how, uh, if you're used to testing for a SQL injection, it's not too much different on an API. So I have just modified the code from the previous video in the series just a little bit. So previously we were reading from this accounts.json file here, right? It had a number of accounts that I created and I just had this as a JSON file and I would just read it in before using this code here. Well, I've actually adjusted that a bit. We're not actually using this function here. I suppose I could um, actually just delete it really. Um, but uh, the way that it's working now is that I created a database where I can import all this data. So I'm just keeping it really simple. I'm using SQLite. It's really quick to get up and running with SQLite 3. Uh, it's already included with Python. You don't even have to download anything, in fact. So what I'm doing is, this is what a, just a kind of run it once type of thing. I'm just creating a database. Um, we call it, we're calling it API.db. And we're creating an accounts table and we're going to have I'm basically going to map it here, right? Like um, we need an ID, a name, social security number, and address. And these two are integers and these two are, you know, strings basically. So I say ID, username, SSN, address, and I can call these whatever. But if I keep it pretty similar to what it's named um, on, the, uh, on the Python side of things, then it'll just be a little less confusing. So I kept them pretty similar, and uh, yeah, see these are integers, and these are text. In SQLite 3, text is basically your, your strings, if you will. And so I'm just creating the table. So you only run that once, so I commented it out, or I might have even deleted it. Oh, I commented it out. And then I populated the database. So I just created a quick script uh, to take in this accounts.json file here, and... Uh, load it in, and then for every single item in there, write it to the database. That's basically what these two functions are doing, the deserialize and write record. So I just ran that, and I wrote, allowed me to instantly write everything to the database, pretty much instantly. And um, from there, I created a retrieve record. Now, this is the one that we're really going to be interfacing with in this video, and it will be called by our API. So if you recall from before, we have this accounts endpoint and uh, it's gonna parse our arguments looking for a UID parameter. And uh, what it's gonna do is call this find account passing in that parameter. So we're actually going to call a function from our database, the retrieve record function. Once again, passing in that UID parameter. So it calls retrieve record and this is the parameter that we're mapping it to here id num we're connecting to the database creating our cursor and we're going to execute a select statement we're going to select everything from accounts where the id is equal to this value right here the uh the id id num i can't use id in python because that is a special name reserved for uh an id functionality. So I had to use a different name. So I just went with ID underscore num. And uh, it's just going to fetch all the items there and then print it out. So this is vulnerable here, by the way, this code right here. And I'll show you how to write this in a secure way. But first, we're going to look at the vulnerable case. So if I use something like Postman, right, I could pass in a UID here. And of course, if I don't pass in the right parameter, and then it'll it'll flag an error. It'll send me the it'll read in the error.json, 
which that was from the last video. Check that one out if you haven't seen that already. So we're doing some validation here. And uh, if we do enter the UID parameter, if it's a valid number, if it's, if it's not, then um, we just will get null. But if we do enter in the proper UID, then we get our account information, right? That was the kind of scenario we were playing out in our heads before. We're saying that this API, you've got to pass it your UID, which should be uh, this identifier that only you know. And uh, another way we could do this is like a username password type thing. But just to keep things simple, we're just going to go with one parameter. We'll say like only you know your UID. And um, if you pass in your UID, then um, you can get all the information related to your account. Not the most secure way to do it because it's in the URL. It's a get request, right? So it can be maybe seen in your history or whatever if you do it over a browser. but uh, Or even up arrowed if you do it on a command line. But just for the sake of a scenario here, let's imagine that we don't know anyone else's uh, user IDs to get their information. Well, we, we can actually use SQL map to see if we can get some SQL injection going on this, uh, on this box, right? So this part is working, uh, working properly. Let's just see, we send something like that, a bad request. Maybe if we, uh, a URL and code that. Let's see what that would be. Let's fire up Kali. And if we go to the decoder, let's say that we encode this as like a um, URL. So percent %27 perhaps. And uh, yeah, we're getting, we're getting bad character here. This is SQL injection on SQLite. So it really depends what version you're playing around with. But, uh, Definitely when it comes to SQL injection, just use SQL map. It's the easiest way to, to go with it. Um, otherwise, you just have to Google a lot, right? Obviously, if you're on OSCP, don't use SQL map because you can't, you're not allowed to use SQL map. But in the real world, you just pretty much use SQL map for most of the cases. And so what I'm going to do here, right, is I'm going to use, um, you know, SQL map here. So what I can say is that... Uh, I can just grab this whole thing here, and uh, the parameters that I'm going to pass, there's going to be quite a bit just to make things a little bit easier, right? Dash U and then the URL, and the more information you can feed in SQL map, the better off you're going to be. It's going to run a lot faster if you tell it. So in this case, we know the DBMS to be SQLite 3. Otherwise, we'd have to figure it out. It would, it would figure it out eventually, just take a little longer. And uh, beyond that... We can tell it the parameter that we want it to test against is exclusively just the UID parameter because we know that to be vulnerable. And we could say, I think it's, I always get these mixed up. I think it's risk five level three, but it could be the other way around. So we'll see. And then from there, let's see, is that, is that it? We could always proxy this if we wanted to through burp right? So we can see what it's doing. So if we say proxy, we should be able to do it. I think you need the equals here. We'll do proxy and tell it HTTP 127.0.0.1 and uh, port 8081, which I have set up on burp already. It's a good proxy this and then we could see all of the payloads that it's trying and things like that. So I think everything should be good here. So let's go and run it. And uh, now we see that uh, the, the, the fact that it's pausing is a good sign. So it says it appears to be vulnerable to a time based blind uh, inject. So we'll just choose the default here. And we see it was able to successfully exploit this parameter is a great sign. So once you get to this point, and let's take a look at um, what happened, right? If you want to really break down what the tool is doing, which I recommend, is you could just look in here. You could see um, different stuff that it's running in here. We could even intercept these so we could see each time it even tried something. Um, we could see what, what was going on. But uh, these are URL encoded, right? And we could decode them as well. Uh, if we wanted to, but um, 
It's doing some uh, union injects, right? And uh, let's see. Like, if we take this line, for example, let's uh, send this to decoder. And we'll just uh, URL decode it. So here's our number here. So literally just space, union, all, select. And uh, there's four parameters that it needs, right? So it's saying three of them are null, and then the last one is what it's doing. Because there were four items in the database, right? And then this is the comment, right? So this is all stuff that you could figure out manually. Um, but right here, it's, all it's trying to do is prove the use case. It's not actually trying to do anything once it proves that it's injectable. So that's where we go next with this. We could say, you know, let's take a look at help. And uh, what we could do is uh, dump to dump the database table entries. Now, a good one, depending on what DBMS you're working with, could be OS shell to actually get code execution or even OS pwn. But in the case of SQLite 3, there is no uh, shell functionality. It's a pretty lightweight, limited in its capabilities type of database. So if I did, for example, if I did try to do that, it would um, basically tell me exactly what I said here. Like if I try to do OS shell, it'll say that SQLite is not possible. On SQLite, it's not possible to execute commands. So instead, what we could do is do dump and dump the database. So let's do it. And there you go. You see, we have dumped the entire database, and I did enter a, an extra entry in earlier when I was uh, creating this one just to test it out. But, uh, yeah, at this point, we've got everyone's, like, social security numbers, addresses, IDs, everything, right? So this is a, se a successful SQL injection attack on the SQLite 3 database. Now, how do we actually prevent against this attack? How do we mitigate it? Well, it's actually quite simple. What you want to do is you want to use what are called uh, parameterized queries, okay? And what parameterized queries are is, um, let me just shut this one down for now, is if you ever see like these here, right? This is using parameterized queries. So all we have to do is convert that into using that basically. So if we, for a single value, we can just have a question mark in uh, parentheses and then we could say comma ID underscore num. And then you got to give it a, uh, a comma, even if it's like just one value. And uh, we can take away this uh, formatter here. So now if we instead have it like this, it should uh, work this way as well. So let's just test it out in Postman first. So if I run this it works normally in the regular way right but now let's see if we try to run sql map so what i could do is let me flush the session just so it doesn't try to use the thing again and now let's try and dump the database or whatever right so now it's going through notice it didn't pause at that one area anymore and there you go, it just says the uh, get parameter UID does not appear to be, or does not seem to be injectable, right? So yeah, we are no longer vulnerable to SQL injection in this case. This was a really, um, a really good project to work on to create this because it really helped me understand how SQL injection works a lot, a lot more and how to prevent against it. And it was just a really fun uh, video to make. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Do you want me to continue on with this API exploitation video series? There's a lot more that we could tackle. We can do some command injection and cool things like that. Because um, I'm, I'm having a ton of fun making this. I'm learning a lot as well. I hope you guys are learning. Uh, also, uh, if so, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button as well. So we can spread around the knowledge, spread around the learning. And we can all elevate our skill set in cybersecurity. If you are very keen on doing that and continuing to do that right now, I got some videos on screen for you if you want to catch up with the series as well, um, the API web hacking series. And I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.